Well, hello there. So, what I've got right here is supposedly an IBM PC 5160. Spoilers, it isn't. First of all, sorry for the background noise. It is the space heater that I have in here because I would die from the cold uh, that, well, I'm outside in a room that isn't very well insulated. So yeah, at least it would be extremely painful. I'm not sure if I would die, but yeah. So here it is. Uh, the case, as you can see, it is from an IBM 5160, but the insides are not. We have a five and a quarter inch, 360K single-sided floppy drive. Is it single-sided? No, I think it is double-sided. Floppy drive. We have a 1.44 megabyte modern uh, three and a half inch floppy drive, which I have uh, I have put in there after the fact. This wasn't made with that, and well, it can only use it with 720k floppies, and well, 1.44 megabyte floppies formatted as 720k with uh, the high density uh, hole covered up and we have an, I think the interface is ST504 something like that I'm not sure about the interface the thing is it is an MFM hard drive it is a I cannot remember the brand right now but yeah let's turn the thing around take a look at the back So, here we've got, let me get that shot, we've got the model number from IBM, IBM 5160, this thing states the power input, it states that it was made in Greenock, Greenock I think it's pronounced, not sure. Scotland, United Kingdom, it is a model number 5160, copyright code contained herein, and copyright 1980-1982 IBM Corporation, it doesn't state uh, that the code is actually from Microsoft, which it is, well it isn't because it, it doesn't have a basic ROM inside it anymore, but the basic ROM that came with it would be by Microsoft. This uh, just says that this connector is auxiliary powered to 51, 5151 monitor. I do not have a 5151, I have a 5153, which is the CGA monitor. And this just states the power input. It says 50, 60 hertz, 200 to 240 volt. 400 watt? Really? 400 watt? Wow, that's a lot. 2.1 amps. Then we have an exhaust here we have a little cover here which a high pot quality control sticker this cover I believe is for the tape interface we have a keyboard port it is an XT keyboard port which is a DIN 5 and it doesn't use the same protocol as PS2 or AT well it does use the same protocol it uses different scan codes so you cannot use uh, an AT a keyboard or a PS2 keyboard with an adapter. You need to have either an XT keyboard or a dual mode keyboard. We have our expansion slots, eight of them. We have behind this, I think, is the hard drive controller. We have our floppy controller with an external floppy connector. This supports two external floppies. We have an EGA card with our 9-pin, uh, I'm not sure if it is a D-sub connector, but yeah, this uses RGBI or RIGIBI uh, signaling standard. Then we have two RCAs which are not connected to anything, they are connected actually to uh, an internal header which I suppose it's there for some kind of ex expansion card, but, but as, far, 
Oh god. As far as I know, there's no expansion uh, cards for these. We have parallel port, serial port. Yes, it is a 9 pin serial port. I do not have a 25 pin serial port on this computer. We have a joystick port and audio ins and outs. This is from a sound blaster that I have in there. And well, let's take the cover off. It is, oh, I forgot the big ass clunking power switch. That is really satisfying. Let's uh, take the cover off. There we go. I'll bring you a little bit closer here. Let's adjust the tripod. There we go. And you can see that it is not an IBM PC on the inside. As you can see, if I can adjust this, the motherboard is a generic PCXT clone motherboard. And well, we have our speaker. We have a Sound Blaster 16 that I put in there. We have an I.O. card, which actually is a VESA, or VESA, or however you pronounce it, local bus card. You can see it is really long, and there is the VESA connector. Also, the Sound Blaster 16 is a 16-bit ISA card. So this guy is just flapping around in the breeze there, mainly because this computer came with a serial and parallel controller card. It also had a mouse systems uh, mouse port, but the thing is, it glitched out with any mice that I tried to connect through the serial port. Uh, Windows wouldn't. Yes, I have Windows on this thing. Uh, Windows wouldn't detect the mouse properly. Uh, cute mouse, cute mouse is a, a DOS driver, a modern DOS driver from free DOS to use a mouse on on any DOS, pretty much. Cute mouse wouldn't even detect the mouse, and the generic Microsoft driver would detect it. Uh, well, would detect my uh, Logitech serial mouse. It would detect it as a Microsoft mouse. It would kinda work, but I wouldn't have middle click because my mouse has three buttons, so I wouldn't have. I didn't have middle click, so I had to change the card for this one, which is the only I/O card I had. Also, the other card had some jumpers for configuration, you know, IRQs and well, pretty much IRQs. And for the life of me, I could not get those jumpers configured properly. I wasn't able to find any any documentation on the card online. So yeah, this card, on the other hand, had uh, well had a lot of manuals available, and I was able to configure it for one serial port and one parallel port, and that's it. It also has an IDE controller but that's only for the visa bus it also has a floppy controller which I have disabled since I want to use this one which is the original IBM floppy controller and yeah I have it oh it also has a game port which I have disabled obviously because I have the sound blaster then we have this which is an EGA card uh, this is a chips EGA card quite a low-end one I think let me take it out for you it is quite a low-end card uh, but it does have f uh, 200 sorry 256 kilobytes of video memory which is quite impressive for an EGA card but here we go let's say chips P82 C435 this is the header that I was talking about that connects to the RCAs. We have jumpers in the back. I have currently set them for a CGA monitor. 
because obviously I'm using a CGA monitor it just flips out whenever it goes this card goes into EGA mode also let me take out the the IO controller let me give me a second here and I'm not editing this because I am quite lazy when it comes to these things so yeah let's just take this out there as you can see Visa and it also has 16-bit ISA it's just a UNC one of these all-in-one uh, adapters and it has a wind bond it has a couple of wind bond uh, IO controllers there. As you can see, it would have an ISA IDE connector, but of course, this wouldn't work on an 8 bit, on an 8 bit uh, ISA connector. It would need a 16 bit, but yeah. The Sound Blaster is nothing to look at, really. Whoopsies, I put this in the wrong slot. Uh, Sound Blaster is really nothing to look at. It's just Sound Blaster 16. It's one of the. It's, it's actually a Vibra. It's one of the early ones, which uh, has its separate uh, Yamaha OPL3 chipset. As you can see, it has Vibra 16S here, Creative. And it has there's the OPL3 chip that I love so much. And this is a plug and play card, as you will have noticed, since there are no uh, jumpers in the card. But the the plug and play manager or the plug and play program that is used config to configure it actually works on this machine which is it wouldn't work on a regular XT it wouldn't work on a regular PC but this thing has a, an NEC V20 CPU so it has uh, 80186 instructions so the program works let's take the floppy controller out this one is actually the original IBM floppy controller. I do not know how it ended up in this machine when all of the all the other components are not original, but here we go. There is the part number 8530. And you can see this lovely ceramic dip package which feels amazing. And here is the uh, hard disk controller. I'll take it out too. Let's unplug these. And here we go. It is a uh, I think that is SMS, not sure. Yeah, there you go. It does have its own BIOS. Made in USA, you don't see that anymore. Let's put this in there. It plugged in yet? Put that back in there. Uh, and there's the dishwasher finishing its cycle. Let's see if I can plug this in. Which I I don't seem to be able to for some reason. There we go. And now the screw fell. To the floor. There we go. Let's pick it up. And well, let's take a look 
add some other parts in here. We've got whoopsies. Put that in. We've got our five and a quarter inch floppy drive. This is the original IBM drive. And yeah, that's there's nothing to see. Right. Well, it has a lot of logic. These days you could fit two quad-core computers, two quad-core ARM single single board computers in the space of this. And this is just a floppy a floppy card, but the well the card from a floppy. And that's about it. Let me see if it actually is yep, it is double sided. It does have two head connectors here. We have the three and a half inch floppy which is held in with a zip tie here and with a screw here on the side. But uh, let's see if I can remember the I know the the hard drive is manufactured by the same company as the floppy drive. And the floppy is a I don't know what. It is not a Connor. It sounds similar to Connor, but it is not a Connor. I cannot remember. But yeah. We have the power supply, which is massive here. Which has the power switch integrated on the side. And I guess let's take a look at the motherboard. And here is the motherboard. So, we've got our CPU right there, NECV20, running at 8 MHz. We have our power connectors right there, AT style. We have our 8 ISA slots, 8 bit. We have a bunch of glue logic here. We have what I presume is the uh, peripheral controller. We have our BIOS, looks to be in an Intersil uh, EEPROM. We have, I don't know what these are. We have more glue logic. We have our RAM, three banks here. No, four banks actually. It is a full 640K RAM. We have bank zero on one here. Bank 2 and Bank 3. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the motherboard. There's, like, there's really not that much. We have the keyboard connector. We have an expansion socket for putting in an 8087 FPU or equivalent. And well, in between the ISA slots, you can see the model of the motherboard is AC. 1100 was made in Taiwan and it is a turbo board and there's a serial number and that's all the info I can get on this motherboard I haven't been able to find absolutely anything on the internet and yeah I wasn't the one that replaced the motherboard in this PC I actually got it like this I just bought it thinking it was an XT and well, I got this. Well, for ten euro, I got this thing for ten euro together with the with the monitor. So I can't really complain. But yeah, and there's all the expansion cards I took out. So yeah, that's been pretty much it. Bye.